Hey, I'm FIFA Gaming, and this is Arts of Iron 4, a World War II strategy game. But your objective is, well, whatever objective you want to make. Do you want to win World War II? Do you want to lose World War II? Do you want to kind of observe World War II? It's up to you. Now I play games in unconventional ways. And the most unconventional way of playing the Netherlands is the communist path. No doubt about it, the most unconventional path. One of the great gems of the Netherlands is you've got access to this oil and rubber in the Dutch East Indies. And all this oil here in the West Indies as well. What this part of the focus tree does is it gives it away and makes it independent. Can you build a strategy around that? Can you survive the Netherlands in the worst possible path for them? We're about to find out. First off, we start off with our army. It's not a big army, but it is an army. We'll move them home. Next up, what's the first thing we're going to do? It's form a government, make it our way this path and go for the communists to begin the, the transition to communism. We do have an air force. We'll merge them all up and send them home. And the biggest prize is we do have a decent navy. Four fleets, decent ships, probably one of the bigger navies in Europe if you ignore Italy, France, and Germany, and the UK. So all of Europe. Yeah, it's not big, is it? Production-wise, yeah, the, the Netherlands has got nothing going on. Nothing. Let's focus on diversifying our production with a little bit onto artillery and the rest onto guns. And we'll make a few convoys to begin with. As you can see, we have no manpower. This is something we'll fix by going communist. And it's probably one of the good things of going communist. You'll see. The zero manpower nation won't need manpower because it will be gaining unlimited ticking manpower. Same start to a game. Let's get that economy rolling. The most standard of openings. I couldn't be any more than more standard. And seeing as we're on toaster economy to begin with, infrastructure is going to be the best bang for our book. And we'll go with building in our capital region of Holland. And then we'll go from there. Now, you start off with some good resources abroad. And that results in lots of exports. And when you export resources, you gain free civilian factories. Which will be a big boost to the economy early on. So let's go from there. Five speed. Planes have arrived. We'll merge them up. Let's see what we've got. So we've got close air support and some fighters. Can we look at the model for the fighters? No, we can't. Because I believe these are a foreign model. So we don't have the ability to actually look at the design for them. Is it this one? Is it the Fokker? Could be this, or it could be this. No, we actually don't have design for that fighter, so we don't actually know what it is. However, we do have this one, which is not great. And then this one, which is also not great. You see a pattern forming. Not great is the strategy. But now, get ready for the ultimate adrenaline rush with War Thunder. The most comprehensive vehicle combat ever and it's free to play on PC and consoles. Take command over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships from 10 major nations. Spanning from the era of biplanes to the modern jet fighter, become immersed in the combat of War Thunder with immense detailed vehicles, graphics, and sound effects. With a community of over 70 million players worldwide, engaging in constant epic pvp battles war thunder is a haven for fans of military history that's right you drive any tank fly any aircraft and sail any ships with just a mouse keyboard or controller even in simulator mode whether it's pc playstation or xbox simply click the link provided in the pinned comment and video description and get into the battlefield. If you're new or you're a returning player that hasn't played for six months, you'll be able to take advantage of this bonus pack waiting for you, which includes multiple premium vehicles, Eagle of Valor decor, generous 100,000 silver lions, and seven days of premium for free. This is a limited deal, so take advantage of it while you can. Click the link in the description. I'll see you on the battlefield. We started the game with eight civilian factories. Now we have 11 because we are exporting resources to other countries. A little bit of rubber and a, ooh, a massive amount of oil. The Dutch economy is ready to take over the world and then not take over the world because we're going to give away those resources anyway. Uh, now I see why people don't do this path. New government has formed. We have now gone from a bad economy to, well, a defeatist economy. Minus 25% support limit. Minus 25% support limit. That just basically means less of my country has to be taken for me to capitulate. Surrendering is the path of the Dutch and also the French, but not the Chinese. They hold out for a long time. Next up, the gateway to Europe. Okay, we've got a navy. We're going to exercise it. And the reason why we're going to do that is we have unlimited fuel. Look, the fuel's not even ticking down and we are exercising our fleet. And this gives us practically unlimited naval XP. 
Don't forget to do the repairs. And oh, we've damaged this ship already. You're only exercising for two weeks at sea. How did you get damaged? Did it run aground? I don't know. A little bit of a path change here. I think radio is too early because we're not going to be going to war that early. So I think what we're going to do is fix our air force. I think we can work on a good fight that's going to be really worthwhile. In this case, we're forced to go multi-role tactical aircraft. And then top that off as well, we need the new chassis, which is this one. And then ideally, survivability studies and machine guns are always going to be worthwhile. The gateway to Europe. So what this does is allows us to maintain trade neutrality. And we do that by boosting, by putting points in to get neutrality. So we don't favor the British and we don't favor the Germans. And it says exactly that we need to have a total of 50 influence points spent into trade influence points but no more than five points for either side the uk or britain so we just have to keep hitting these buttons over and over again don't panic it costs political power but you gain this political power back in the meantime we can hop over to the rest of the focus tree and do things like abandon the gold standard oh no libertarians in the comments we're doing the worst thing power to central banks boys we don't do the left path because the left path is really bad because it's all to do with your colonies, which we're going to get rid of anyway. That's really bad. A light bulb is just lit at the top of my head and I realized that all of this part of the focus tree, the left side here, from here leftwards, is completely useless because you decolonize. The focus tree has just gone a lot smaller, lads. Anyway, gold standard. Bye-bye. Dispersed industry is the path we're going to go for because we're going to focus a little bit on our air. I really love the name of that uh, air myo. Cool... Hoven. I like that. You have definitely selected the most cool Mayo. Congrats. We'll exercise our planes to level three. We'll be using these planes. Probably not because they're not got the right stats. But it is something we are going to work towards. Go to one. It's followed by Cement Mixer 2. We have an engine and now we have a basic airframe. The gold standard is gone. All right. So we need to keep pushing points into here. So just keep clicking them. 10 days for each. Oh, you can do both at the same time. Oh, paradox. Not very often you have the option to do that. At the same time, we're also going to continue the public works, which fixes our construction problems. We are sitting on political power right now, but there's nothing we could spend it on because we need an army guy. And all of these advisors, if you look really closely, it says the ruling party is democratic or non-aligned. If you go communist, this guy disappears. So that 150 political power is wasted. So be very careful what advisors you select. You'll have been warned. All right, let's exercise our dudes as well. Level three. Here we go. Oh, wow. Zero war support and zero manpower. Things are looking pretty good. Not more infrastructure. Yeah, why not? Let's do it. More points. So you need a total of 50 points in total divided between Britain and Germany. We're at 30 now. Only a few more clicks away. Easy. Almost there. 2020. The good year. The best year. 2025. There we go. And now we can go all the way over and maintain trade neutrality. So both have, have to have at least 50 points. Oh, I'm wrong. So it's not a total amount. It's 50 between them. Okay, in that case, we've got an option to select another focus. Do we do some more fixing of our construction network? Yeah, let's do it. So with zero war support, as you can see, we gain very little command power. And without command power, we can't assign our chief of army because it costs a set amount of command power to fix them in place. It doesn't eat into command power. It just permanently takes it away until you unassign them. Disperse one, followed. One disperse two. The patterns, boys. And one final one is we'll overturn the budget cuts, which gives us a massive amount of war support, which is really useful because it gets us off zero. I think it might not even give us five because we're in such a big minus number of minus 10% due to the leader of the Netherlands. And then one more for Germany, and then we're at 50 50. So we could go for range improvements, but they're not worthwhile because look at the air zone we're going to be fighting in. It's very, very small. In that case, range does not help us unless we get outside of that zone, of course. But our main priority is survival. So in that circumstance, range is not a biggie. However, air experience is a biggie because we can't even make our ideal plane anyway. Now, survival ability studies is pretty good too. It reduces our range if we go for armor. However, if we go for self-sealing, the downsides it eats into rubber. Choose your poison. And in the end of the day, you'll probably start off with self-sealing, but then you'll have to move on to armor because remember, you're going to lose your rubber. However, that is two years ahead of time, and I think that's a little bit much. So we'll focus on the raw bare essentials here by going for soft attack as well as here as well. But I've heard that machine tools are an option, so let's do that. All right, we got 55 for the Brits and 50 for the Germans. I'm just going to put an extra point to Germans so we keep it balanced between 
both sides and that way we won't run into an issue where one side have more than the other 35 days maintain trade neutrality here we come those those dutch so invested into being neutral nothing good can come of this so and the general so we've got a field marshal and he's horrendous and we have a general and he's pretty horrendous you know what makes me a little bit scared is when i say that most of the high command are all bald and listen nothing wrong with bald bald is beautiful okay that tends to tell me they're quite old and if they're old that probably means they've got these world war one ideas and i'm thinking oh that's not going to work in this war no 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 all right then 19.8 90.9 9, and 20 we have enough command power to assign an advisor that probably isn't going to help us that much mm, no speed and out of combat supply neither are useful but it gives ticking army xp that's the reason why we came here the legacy of oh my goodness pronouncing dutch we're gonna go de seven province yes that's we'll go with that say it with an accent dave then it'll sound more convincing it's a little bit early but we're not really using too much of our economy so i'm going to invest in it to an agency this will reduce planning bonus for germany and gives us a little bit more breathing room and in the day we're going to be at war with germany regardless it just might be a good idea to do it give us a bit more space and space is time and then time is something we desperately need because otherwise the germans will be banging out our back doors like plus 10 percent gave us two percent war support see what i mean we're so deep in the hole it doesn't even matter all right let's go for the standard upgrades we'll probably just go for localized trading centers to get german spies that has killed our entire economy uh, but when we get that one out of the way all the other upgrades are going to be significantly cheaper and as you can see now we're going to focus on loads of things that are going to get the soft attack and boost our infantry of our very 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 small army we've got eight divisions and that consists of 72,000 manpower not all of that is even being used because we've not even got access to that manpower oh dear so this gives us access to the communist guy and an additional chunk of communism so then we hire the communist guy and this is going to give us loads more communism but this ticking communism is so slow all right training centers pop we got a spy he's german and he's just the time being i'm going to keep him in my uh my capital because i don't want him to get captured if one spy and you've only got one spy and he gets captured i mean there's no one else to save him so he's stuck all right we're in a position right now where we need to invest political power because what we kind of want to do is have a civil war because otherwise we're going to be spending the entire game going communist and it's just going to take way too long the big downside to this unfortunately is you're going to lose your amazing stability and that is something that the dutch have a lot of pride with Dutch pride, Dutch courage. Oh, I see, I see. Mayo, and we're going to focus on production to begin with, and we'll come back to it later. So this is the plan. We're going to prepare for a civil war, then we're going to hit expand civil support. This means you give ticking communism, and you lose stability. We've gone from our 100% pristine stability, which gives us super juicy bonuses, to not juicy bonuses. It's sad, because that's the only bonus you kind of start with as the Dutch. So you're losing that 100% stability, which is not great, but it is what it is. Let's fix our economy some more. Because we've finished Disperse Industry 1, we have got the option to build with new building slots. However, I'm very nervous to build on the border here. Not so much here. This is safer, but there's less building slots in this area. Let's just finish the infrastructure for now and go from there. And now we've built infrastructure everywhere. So we're forced to make mills. Not a bad thing to do because we need the industry. However, because we're on civilian economy, we're suffering from a big construction penalty stacked with an additional construction penalty of uh, the crisis Jaron. Who's Jaron? I'm going to go for naval reform, giving ticking naval XP and top that off as well. We could go for naval experience, but unfortunately, we lack the command power again. Anyway, top it off. Expand civilian support again. And we're going to expand our spy agency as well so we can get at least an extra spy. Top it off. I elusive gentleman for additional plus one spy two military factories i'll take it and our stability is still pretty damn high there is a little bit of a technique to get it lower but you'll get that stability back i'll show you at the time being keep fitting expand civilian support an upgrade another one interrogation techniques we can go for the navy guy now we can go for the commerce rating 200 political power is that worth it probably not another spy i guess we can use the spies now so i'll have one here and one here for now so what we're trying to do now is get your stability into the 50s so one more and that'll push it to like 54 percent because i think every time you click this you lose 10 stability over time so what we're going to do is delete our army no army left and wait for this focus to complete we're now in the 50s for stability 
Focus is complete. Research is complete. We have a mile for our guns now. Comes a little bit late, but it is what it is. Here we go. Now we're at 51% stability. We're going to go anti-communist rage, which loses another 10% stability. And then you've got the option to ignite a civil war. Wow. Look at this civil war. The Dutch divided. And then I get to train a bunch of divisions. I'm going to train these at lightning speed. The communist Dutch led by a veteran communist. How can you be a veteran? This is the very first communist commune of the Dutch. How can you be a veteran? So the beauty of this, it gets rid of shell shock from the Great War, so we don't have to remove that manually. Fantastic. But unfortunately, we've lost the queen. See, communists aren't big fans of queens, okay? Discovering all that communist lore. So now we can do fun things like the red is the new orange. And this removes the popular figurehead and gives us war support, which we desperately need. And then we're going to deploy these guys the minute they get to 20% training. Start working on more powerful artillery. 18%, 90%. Deploy. Send them in. And we'll split them and send them to the victory points. And that was the most bloodless civil war. I think probably one or two shots were fired in total. Nice. Frontline Germans. Remember, we need additional spy, at least three spies in total. We'll get more upgrades. I think we're about one or two upgrades away from a plus additional one spy. Disperse Industry 3. We're going to rush it. Industry, industry, industry. Okay, we need air XP now, so we need more command power. So we're going to work on that next. Alternatively, what we could do is train an additional 10 divisions. Because if we have, I believe, 30 divisions, 30, we need 30. So we're going to need significantly more. We need 21 in total. And when we've got 30 divisions, then we can send volunteers to either Spain or China meaning we can grind air xp that way 30 percent stability oh once again the big bonus to the dutch was our fantastic stability and unfortunately it's gone now more divisions deploy them now we have the option to send volunteers do we do we yes we do send air volunteers question is is our air force big enough to send one air wing it is not ah oh, i can't believe the game does this to me i could probably try and do it to the republicans too but yeah once again i can't even send one so you have a you need to have a baseline air force numbers to be able to send volunteers and it's a simple reason to prevent like loads of small nations flooding the spanish civil war with planes creating this massive air battle over spain it makes sense if you think about it but i would need to expand my air force to begin with to be able to send the volunteers which is kind of sad but it is what it is now, unfortunately, we just need to work on getting air XP. So the only thing we can do about that is getting command power to go for the chief of the air force. At the end of the day, we are going to take advantage of these divisions. So it's not a complete waste. Red is the new orange, which gives some spicy bonuses. Let's have a look. So construction permanently and some war support. Oh, war support. Oh, yeah. There we go. Partial mode. Let's go. All right. And it's time to hit the forbidden button. Everybody in my body's saying this is a bad thing to do. Don't do this, Dave. Look, just look at this. We lose two of our biggest colonies. We lose stability. But we gain political power, manpower, and for a year, a big bonus to construction. Oh, we actually gain eight divisions as well. Oh, okay. Eight, nine divisions. Okay. All right. Doesn't blow me away. It doesn't turn me on. But it's something. I think... The simplistic view is that the idea that communism is always anti-monarchy and communism is always anti-colonies. I think there's some place in between where those two could exist at the same time, you know? Does anyone feel that? Because I still feel like communism has a bit of nationalism baked into it as well. So the idea of natural calais of the Dutch would exist in the Dutch East Indies. Am I talking about history law here? Am I talking about my A? Let me know in the comments below. And there we go. Decolonization. Okay, we've got a bunch of new divisions. Are they any good? Th they're okay. Stick them on the front line. Off you go. Top it off as well. Might as well start mobilizing. Yeah. What's the options that we got? We either join the French, which it has to be the French have gone the communist path, which if you're playing single player, just roll the dice. What, you've got one? Congratulations, you've got communist France. You roll anything else? No communist France. So here are the options. So we go our own path and we gain a little bit of defense on core territory and fort construction. Eh, not ideal. We gain recruitable pop, 5%, that's really high, or 3%. War goals on the allies, nothing good can come of this. And then the haven of tolerance, which gives ticking manpower. Alternatively, we get factory output and a bunch of free off-map factories and a war goal against Germany. We ain't gonna be declaring any wars. It is the bastion of communism. You know the beauty of this path though? 
is even though this is the technically path that has the best bonuses it doesn't deprive her from joining the soviet union so i just might do that anyway let's just make sure this focus is complete first before i actually join a focus because it says he's not in a faction with the soviet union so we want to complete this focus first all right we've got guns now and manpower is becoming easier so we'll convert our entire army to the big division now we are severely lacking guns now we need steel to make the production for that and we're going to need a little bit of anti-air too so we'll put two into there so what's going to happen is at the very start of blitzkrieg germany will hit us with a lot of cast and we need our own planes or some anti-air capabilities to shoot them down so in this case we're going to go for air night operations this is going to give us a bit of air speed then we can design our perfect fighter which is going to look something like this oh, single engine i always forget you can double do double engine and we're going to need a xp for that so we have to wait a little while Okay, we are low on trains as well. So we're going to have to work on that immediately. The bastion of true communism. All the other communist states weren't real communist states. This is the real communist state. See, guys, that's the problem. We never tried real communism. And then we make the planes. This is the Fokker that we want. I don't like the look of this plane, but we can always upgrade it to one that looks a bit swankier. Like, ooh, like that one. Look at that one. That's a beauty. And our industry has completely died. And one of the reasons for that is because we've lost all our oil and rubber. Let's have a look. We have the Republic of Indonesia. You know, in a perfect world, you'd reach some kind of agreement with the companies inside of Indonesia, wouldn't you? To be able to can control more of their oil and rubber, you would just immediately lose it, you know, straight away. And the same with this island as well. Still called the Netherlands Atilles, even though it's nothing to do with the Netherlands anymore. But they've got the oil. We desperately need industry now, so we're gonna need trucks. We're gonna need planes. We need that industry to wake up. All right, enemies on all fronts. Five recruitable or war support and war goals against Belgium and Luxembourg. I mean, that's awesome and everything. But are we even going to have time to attack them and knock them out? Probably not. But should we try? I feel like we're stupid not to, right? All right, we've got a general. We need another general, so we're going to have to hire one. Do we have the command power to do that, though? General, general, find a guy. No, we need command power to do that. Not enough command power. You have, you need 10, you've got five. So unfortunately, this doesn't happen very often in Hawaii, but we're going to have a general that's unassigned to an army. Once again, it doesn't happen very often, but in this case, we're here. Question would be, is Belgium going to be defended? Will the allies guarantee them? I don't know. We're at 938 right now, so we have another year for, to breathe before the Germans come on knocking. We'll see how we do. Oh, we've run out of fuel now because remember we've not got the oil from the indies anymore so the unlimited naval xp at hack is unfortunately not going to work anymore we'll attack immediately go aggressive and we'll just see how we do i'm nervous because of the supply situation we might not break through so we might have to try and get some trains the free train button is here lose some stability gain free trains all right go on then belgium no more belgium go 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 a bit of a grind but we'll get through just from sheer numbers agent captured not good okay enemy on all fronts gained five percent recruitable which gives us an amazing amount of manpower for such an unbelievably small nation all right next up so okay we've got a spy that's been captured so we're going to try and free them however we do need 50 support equipment for that which really sucks because we're not making support equipment so there we go forcing us to mix up our economy even though we don't we can't really do that the belgium's holding on even get their colonies as well but for some reason communism doesn't care about these colonies all right off we go and then luxembourg now you're probably thinking what's the point of this this is just land that's not really going to give us a big deal you're right however there's a magic button it was everything in hoi 4 boom there you go we are now the Belalux socialist state was the name of it there you go you can see it at the top left Belalux socialist state wow and one of the big downsides to this is it's now made my border really, really long. Which means now the Germans are in a better opportunity to break through us and push through us. So from my perspective, this isn't a net gain. I think you lose a little bit here. I suppose the big positive from this is you get to take advantage of the industry and the core territory and the manpower, which is going to be pretty huge. But unfortunately, the big downside is that now we've got more land to defend. It might even be more better to just do something like like this. Yeah, that's probably going to be the ultimate hold ground zone for the Netherlands. Can we get here? There we go. That's it. That's it. All right, we've got loads of guns now because we've stole them from Belgium and from Luxembourg. So now we need to go really heavy on the planes. 
So what we'll do is shift you down here, you go here, and then you go here. Good. We'll do another eight divisions just so we've got two full armies. I think I'm okay with that. Yep, train them up. Top it off, we've got a, a field marshal, which we're going to give defensive doctrine and logistics quiz because they're both really good. Dig in deep, boys. Top it off as well. Now I can do motorized priority. And we're just a little bit behind on trucks. I think we'll get rid of the trains now because we've stolen trains from Luxembourg and Belgium. We've got enough and we can just balance everything out. We don't need the support equipment again yet, but we might need it again in future. We'll see. We have the option now to go for political oil to give in ticking weekly manpower. So now we're in a situation where the Dutch is a very small nation, very isolated, but with your recruitable pop and your ticking manpower, you now have a ridiculous amount of manpower. Practically enough manpower to last you for the rest of the game. Nice. Build more mills. More mills. And we can do war economy as well. However, industry is struggling at the minute. So we're going to have to get some aluminium from France. We don't need the steel anymore. Construction is good. Bit of advanced machine tools. And I'm focusing on soft attack now. Soft attack as well as industry. So get the most of the infantry we've got on the ground. We've got max naval XP. The only logical thing to do here is marines. Pioneers all the way down the right side. We can make some marines. And we can make a very generous amount of marines. Okay. Ideally, though, we'd probably want a bigger division. You know, the small divisions don't have very good stats, so it's not even really worth using those. We'll see how we go. Planes, planes, planes. We're actually producing them now. However, the resources is tricky. And the lack of stability is also tricky, too. So, not only do we have the ticking XP of this baby, we have the option to go one step further, the haven of tolerance. So all around the world, everyone's like, let's go visit the Netherlands, because apparently we're really tolerant, apparently. Apparently. Don't forget to reassign your spies after they've got captured and build that spy network. Getting the max spy network is crucial because that denies the Germans planning bonus. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna sell a bunch of our convoys because we start the game with a ridiculous amount. Yeah, just way too many. We don't need that many anymore. So we'll sell 400, sell them dirty cheap. Will anyone buy them? That's the question. Because we're not even in the same market as everyone else. We're just other communist nations that are in our market. So probably no one will want to buy anyway. Yep. It's just a bunch of nations. And Denmark. What are you doing here, Denmark? Anyway, just accept anyway. All right. We're all almost level three. The manpower's looking pretty good. Haven of tolerance. Good option to declare war on the allies. That's not going to be a good idea. We've got enough enemies as it is. The option to build a bunch of forts. It's only a 10% construction bonus there, but we have the ability to allow flooding, which is going to be really helpful to slow down the Germans if we need to. So we'll take advantage of that now. Top it off as well. We're going to add on anti-air. It's essential. And then we'll have an actual decent army now. Right. We actually have an air force now. It's not massive. Calm down. But it, it's something. So we're in a situation. We don't have a lot of aluminium. We don't have a lot of rubber. So an alternative could be for non-strategic materials however the downside to this is using lots of air defense so our ability to fight in the air is more limited i suppose you could try and balance that out by adding a little bit more armor on it's one of those quantity versus quality situations i think at the moment we're importing goods i think we could just hold on so i'm going to try and hold on for a little bit longer france you're propping up my air industry here keep it up in the meantime 24 of these may 1939 looking good so let's keep an eye on the production here so we're behind by 200 days on anti-air 200 days on artillery 600 days for guns so we're gonna have to balance that slightly and the rest is looking pretty good so we'll just go from here we're gonna motorize priority now will we have enough trucks yes we will just just enough okay protect against germany which gives us a bunch of forts once again one of these focuses i would never usually do However, one of those instances, we just need to hold just for a little bit longer. So what this does do is it does add forts. So what I could do is build additional forts, and then we're building forts on forts. But it doesn't specifically say where the forts are going to be built. I presume the coastal ones are on the coast, but the Friesland one, I, it says add one fort in a province in the state. Like, But where will it be? Will it be on the border? I hope it would be. Regardless, we would need to build in the areas we're going to be defending. What I'm doing is holding control here and shifting them to the top. Then we can just build those forts nice and easy and nice and quick. Good for infantry expert. Better late than never, right? Because we just need that little bit of extra defense just to hold just a little bit longer. Meanwhile, but you forgot about Africa, right? Yeah, I forgot about it too. We actually have rubber here. So we lost rubber and then we kind of inadvertently gained it back again. We liberate the workers. But aren't we the good guys, right? 
<laughs> Ooh, are we the baddies? All right, one horse, and that is going to be our super cheap garrison. Take care of it. We've got the option here to improve the guns, but we'll lose the production efficiency. So just keep on these guns for the time being. It's one of those short-term gain situations. And we're going to mark this to be upgraded, and then we can produce as many of the best possible planes possible. Possible, possible. Balancing our economy a little bit right now. It seems like guns are going to be used more heavily in this situation. So I'm going to go a little bit heavier on the guns. And once again, I feel like a higher level of force is going to be more worthwhile. Okay, so Fortress Holland. Once again, loads of defensive stuff. Anti-air is crucial here. A little bit of anti-air just in this region is going to be massive. So I'm going to go for that. July 1939. The day of doom is coming soon. One thing we're going for that we could take advantage of the most is improvements to anti-air, passive bonus for anti-air, for the ground anti-air, the construction anti-air, as well as the anti-air attached onto our troops. Once again, we're going to get cast strike to death, so it's going to be worth it if we add on as much anti-air capabilities possible. Fortress, Holland. Modernize the grep line, which gives forts in Frisland. That's not an area I plan on defending. Do you have an option here to go for a guy that gives defense? Which one of our chief of the armies? I think that's going to be crucial just before the war. It starts. And also, the Soviet Union is not interested in any way, shape, or form joining the common turn. I think with the time being, I think we're just going to have to deploy an additional 12 divisions just to reinforce our additional army. However, I don't want to make too many because we need to have a stockpile of guns because we're going to get battered on day one. Battered and fried. Exercise. And it does appear that they are justifying on us. As to be expected. What we'll do is add everyone to this front line, but the ones that are low trained will add back onto the rear line and they can exercise on the rear. Ah, oh, that's perfect. So we're in a good defensive spot right now. Our army's fully trained. They're not the best army division templates, I'll admit. However, the air force is in a good position and we've got the spies looking at what they're up to, reducing their planning bonus. So I'm feeling relatively good about this. I think to take it one step further, I think we go a little bit higher on the forts again. Again. Once again, we need to put our economy into something. And I think they're the only two things on top of my mind I can think of because I don't want to build mills into this region that we're going to eventually lose anyway. All right, better planes is a must. Put on the biggest possible machine guns. Myos. So this is for medium planes, medium planes. Seeing a pan farm here, this is not even for fighters. No, none of it is for fighters. It's all for medium planes. So I guess in that circumstance, I just queue everything up because none of this is relevant to me anyway. And the only mile that we can take advantage of it is Fokker. We don't get Fokker until we've spent 210 days. Oh, paradox. Why do you put Mayo so far away? Why? So what did it actually do then, this Frisland one? It just added a fort. It didn't add a fort. It said it was going to add a fort in this state, but it's not. Lies were told today. Many lies. Okay, we've got Maritai's priority now. And the Germans are attacking us. All right, it starts. And the Allies would like us to join their faction. Communists in the Allies. The enemy of our enemy is our friend. So we'll go to speed and we'll just kind of a little bit of survey what's actually happening. So we're going to put everyone on air superiority here. And we're going to see what the enemy is up to. So as you can see, loads of cast bombing us. And as they can probably see here, the initial push in the north is going really well for them. Once again, not a massive surprise. If it looks like we can't hold the front in any way, shape, and form, I'm just going to back out immediately. Okay, okay. I don't know why Britain's given us divisions in Africa, but I'm going to take them, and I'm going to take advantage of them. One of the downsides to this is that at any point, the Allies might just yoink these divisions back and be like, oh, all of a sudden, we changed our mind. Ah, oh, sorry, psych. Which happens quite a lot. Tenacious defense, that seems relevant. And once again, they're pushing the front line here and they've got full air superiority. We're not really denying them that much. We need at least 500 planes to be making a difference here and it doesn't seem to be making any difference. But my upgrade for soft attack, I'll take that for the guns. They're hitting our trucks really heavily here. What I can do at the same time is do strike force just to project a little bit into our Navy. How I'm noticing this port is moving by sea. Can you see this red line here? This is F4 supply map mode, by the way. And it looks like what's happening is they're moving supplies by sea because it's not as fast to move from this location to this one. And the, the weak spot is here. If we were to build up that, this would deny uh, the need to do that because we don't want to move them by sea because they've got a bigger navy than us, so it's pointless. 
I don't think this is going to work, guys. I honestly, everybody in my body is saying this is a complete waste of time. So I think I'm just going to back everyone up. And we're going to manually move everyone back. Yep, move back, move back. Everyone move back. Point a new Supreme Commander. Supreme Commander? Wow. Flashbacks to the old gaming days. So war and pacifism has already been fixed due to the Civil War. However, I'm not sure if there's anything hidden behind that that could help us. So the political part of the focus tree is technically done. We have the naval part, which is definitely not going to take advantage of. The, the air force, on the other hand, could be useful. I suppose we could either do the Zungazi works, which we Gesundheit works, but we can't do that because we don't have control of Frisland. So we're kind of just forced to do either army stuffs, which aren't that great, or invent the screwdriver. There you go, eh? Ah, uh, I think I've not done the right four bat line here because they're already breaking up. Yeah, the four bat line wasn't in the right place there, so we've actually fallen back. And somehow, well, I thought we'd encircled them there. I thought that's what it looks like, but it's not. But that leaves. Oh, no, no, this four bat line was right because that was the control of that set state. No, okay, never mind. I thought I got it wrong, but I'm not. Retreat there, retreat there. We're pulling back. Come on, lads, I believe. Okay, we're falling into a spot now where I feel a bit more comfortable. The chaos of the retreat. I don't want to lose divisions because, once again, just a few divisions lost makes a big difference in the long run, particularly if you want to hold down a decent defense. A little bit of anti-air. How's the production looking? We're losing guns, but everything else is looking pretty swell. Don't have as much control of aluminium anymore because we're losing planes, but we'll get the steel from the Soviet Union. Somehow this has been traveled by land. I don't think the Germans would be very happy with us moving steel to supply a war industry from the Soviet Union through Germany. Figure that one out. Okay, so what I'm basically doing is manually right-clicking and moving everyone back. We've got a bunch of land links. We'll take advantage of that because we've got the convoys for it. And we're moving back. Yep. And obviously, we've fixed our supply situation in the coast as well. That's good. Okay, we have doctrines. What would be the best doctrine in this scenario? So mass assault for the manpower. Reinforce rate's really good for the defeat defensive. Uh, raw firepower is going to be superior firepower and grand battle plan for just kind of a bit of a mix and everything. My instincts are telling me mass assault, you know. This feels like a mass assault meme. So what mass assault does is it adds lots of reinforce rate. Let me go back to it. And reinforce rate means that if you're stuck in reserves, you will immediately go into the front line if there's a space to feet to fit into. But if there's no space, then you just sit on the back line. And it also gives a big boost to recruitable pop. And it also gives guerrilla warfare, which is the best defensive tactic in the game. The wall of the Netherlands has appeared and our stats are awful. We can do this though. So this is flooding. So you gain a big defense bonus. You slow down the Germans absolutely massively, but unfortunately it damages a lot of your factories. Do you know what? This is just a big straight up win. I think the only instance I'm going to click that though is if I'm in a situation where this is looks all is lost. At the moment, I'm actually feeling like I'm holding here and it's looking pretty good. So we'll just continue to hold, shall we? Yeah. Restructure our industry a little bit. We don't need as much anti-air as we once did. Don't know why we were signing so many trucks on. Everything else is looking pretty good now. Steel is our number one resource. Okay, it's moving by sea now. I don't want that. So there's no other options. I guess we get it from the UK. Okay, we are actually losing this said location. So in that case, let's do it. Flood the Netherlands, destroying our own industry. This will initiate in 13 days. Oh, it doesn't activate immediately. Ah, okay. Okay, desperate times means we need reinforce rate. Going down the right side, the human wave is here. Five, four, three, two, one. Holland is flooded. We can drain it. Oh, so we take advantage of this this bonus for as long as we need to. But look at our industry now. We've just destroyed it. <laughs> With the option now to do ambush as well for defense. But I think we're going to focus on the counterattack. We're thinking about victory. We're not thinking about how we can defend forever. We're thinking about how we can counterattack. So ambush would give us entrenchment, which is debatable how effective that is. But infantry attack, 10% attack is really good. It's something we could take advantage of more and more and more as the game progresses. Losing a lot of key ground here, and I'm not a happy bunny, but it is what it is. You gotta defend, we gotta hold. And the air battles are really hurting us right now. Our planes just can't hold back. What I'm gonna try and do, we've got a choice. We either go for air superiority or interception. It might be a good idea to just do interception to try and shoot down the cast over trying to dominate the air completely. So just understand air superiority is where you're constantly flying your planes out in sorties to intercept anything in the air. So you have full control of the air, which has the added bonus of breaking down their breakthrough and dropping their defeat defense as well. The downside is you end up losing more planes because you're actively using them more. Interception means you only launch the planes in the event you see enemy bombers. 
And in this case, they've got a lot of enemy bombers, so that's a problem. Let's delete that front line here and delete the fallback line. And then what we'll just do is create a field marshal front line. That'll avoid anyone attacking unnecessarily. And everyone gets into a key position where they are equally going to be defending. What I'm actually trying to do is I can see that this is the weak spot that they're trying to push into. So I'm actively trying to funnel troops into this said location. My looks of things, it's like they're about to take it, possibly. No, we've reinforced the time, so we are holding ground. And right now, we're maintaining manpower, and we're relatively maintaining equipment, too. So I'm feeling quite positive about this. The Phillips screwdriver has been done. We follow it up by the research slots. Convoys. Convoys. South, aggression, South Africa, we're like a non-aggression pack. Okay. The spamming of non-aggression packs is a bit weird for the AI, isn't it? Like, it doesn't even make sense. Like, if you're on the other side of the world, why would you be asking for an aggression pack? It doesn't even make sense. All right, planes. We're going to go for air crew surveys. Then we've got the option to do the left path because we're going to need to do interception and then work our way down to agility. Our planes are holding out, but they're not doing very well. They just outnumber us like four to one. It's just not working in our favor. The good news is the spies are holding ground. Can you imagine if they were taking advantage of planning bonus, how much damage they would be doing here? It would be insane. I love this one here. Can you see that? Plus 50% weather. Can you see that? Plus 50% weather. That's not weather. That's the flooding bonus. <laughs> the Dutch are very well suited to fighting in the marshes. Don't forget, keep researching stuff that gives soft attack bonuses because this will give us the biggest bonus in the short term. On top it off as well, fixing that AA artillery to do the most damage is definitely for the win. I'm just so disappointed I've lost all my planes. That was kind of my strategy I was going to be proud of, but unfortunately we're just not making as many anymore. Old! Charismatic's quite good because it gives division recovery rate, which just means when they're not actively in combat, just them having to retreat due to having low organization, they'll regain their organization faster before having to go into battle again, which means that they continue this continued rotation of uh, defending. I'd like to join the allies again. I think they booted me out of it. So what happens is because I invaded Belgium and Luxembourg and annexed them, um, I'm seen as tainted. I'm not really seen as a proper member of the allies. For some reason, the AI just wants to keep asking me to join again. And I'm going to be like, sure, yeah, I'll do that. Oh, we're defending and no one's attacking us. No attacks. And they've not broken France either. It doesn't even look like they're even close to breaking France. Oh, is this the tipping point? Have we reached it? I'm going to be so brave. I'm going to exercise my troops on the front line. Get them to level three. I have that extra defense. Okay, we're struggling with steel now. Ooh, so badly. And I think it's because we're low on convoys. So what we need to do, stop selling convoys on the market. And now we've got loads of convoys again. Looks like we did actually sell a few of our convoys on the market. Pro tip, sell them at the very start of the game. Because that's when the AI needs them the most. That's when they see like, oh, we've got supply problems. So sell them at the very start of the game. Gain the diplomatic surplus bonus. Take advantage of the construction bonus. I sold them a little bit late in this scenario. Don't do that. All right, steel's a bit imported from Britain over the channel. Import that Dutch courage. We're actually catching them on, on gun production now. Biggest issue, though, is stability. And there's not really any communist advisors we can select. You don't gain any. In this case, we're going to have to do working conditions and just do the basics to try and up that stability. Stability right now is appalling. Once again, Dutch are usually really great for the stability. In this one instance, not so much. Oh, dear. This is not looking good. France, brothers, hold on. Uh, still showing 70% towards capitulation. Have they gotten rid of destroying government? No. They've lost Paris, but they're still holding. All right, we finally balanced the books on our guns. So at this point in time, I kind of want to have a massive surplus. Let's get at least 2,000 guns in the bank before we start moving our production onto planes. And I think at this point, we're going to be desperate about reducing resources because we don't want to import it. So we're going to go for the one, unfortunately, I don't want to do. But it's the only way we can keep up our production of planes. The basically, the discount, no aluminium, bamboo planed fighter plane. I don't know what it'd be made out of. I guess it'd be made out of wood, wouldn't it? Hey, there were some very successful planes in World War II that were made out of wood. No one dis wood. Wood good. All right, here we go. So now I'm going to pop those out. We don't need the steel as much. Now we import the aluminium from the UK. Yes, we will no longer have construction. I'm aware. And as you can see now, we are actually actively hitting their fighters as well as their bombers as they're trying to do logistical damage. So they're hitting our railways here, hitting our trucks and hitting our trains. 
And how many trains do we have? We have 132 in the stockpile and we only need 20. So they're going to be taking out a lot of trains before it becomes a real problem. The right path. So more reinforcement rate. Then we gain org. Then we gain manpower reinforce rate. Then we gain the ultimate defensive strategy of guerrilla warfare. France. Rip. Norway wants to send us some planes. I'll accept. All right. They've uh, initial, initiated the counterattack once again. Attack into the floodings. The joy of this, though, is they have to break that big bonus that we're getting for defense. But there's no real downside to us here. So when you initially hit this button, you gain a big bonus to defense and they experience a big penalty to attrition. However, you lose some factories. But if you repel those factories, everything's back to where it was. Okay, we can join the allies once again. Do you want us in the allies or not? Huh? Want us here or not? It could be a great ally. So they keep trying to push into this eastern position here. And they're actually quite having a lot of joy with it as well. Seems that France is gone now. This is, we are the new punching bag of Europe. Uh, operational reserves is good for HP, which just means we lose less equipment and manpower and the attackers. Something we have to take advantage of. Okay, UK does not want to trade with us anymore because our trade influence is low. Boost relations with them? They hate us because we've made world tension. Come on, Britain. Try and understand. I know we don't see eye to eye on that situation, but we need to work together in the long run. Right? Hmm? No, we're holding. So it's just, once again, this weak spot in the east is the problem. But every time they attack and we move more divisions into this active spot, we are holding. Okay, we're going to have to import... Oh, okay, Britain doesn't want to trade with us now again. Okay. Just needed to improve relations just a little tiny bit. And that was enough. Now the industry is kicking ass again. Good. Delete these air wings. They're not being used. We only have 30 planes now. We've got an ace, but he's a bomber ace. We're going to import a bunch of guns. Will it get into the nation? No, that is the question. The English channel is more than likely under English control. Hence the name. More air XP. More lend lease. Isn't it fun point defensive in Hoi 4, right? Oh, we have the Council Communist. You lose political power, but you gain factory output. 30% though. Come on, 30%. That's too high. And we also have the colonial communists, which gives communism and more ticking manpower. <laughs> that's, that's really funny. So there's lots of manpower at the moment that appears out of thin air. One from the colonies, two from communism, and then three for, well, I guess, this case, more communism. Is our manpower going up now, not going down? <laughs> that's just funny. We're defending, lads. Defense. Defend the Netherlands. Look at all these planes, though. Yeah, we're losing more planes than we're gaining now. Oh, that so sucks. We have a bunch of other planes, but do we really want to take advantage of these planes? They're just going to get shot down. I have no way to train them. I guess what I could do is deploy them into Britain, fly them over, merge them, and exercise them to level three. Then I kind of just feel like I'm take advantage of the best possible planes in the lowlands even though i am still going to be outnumbered and outgunned love that britain has decided to lend leases three spitfires three air wings of spitfires but they're all scout planes ah i've been kicked from the faction for britain again gee thanks britain so i'm keeping a claw ice on my trucks here and i can see i'm losing more trucks than i'm gaining those trucks are ticking down really quickly you know what i'm gonna do is turn off motorized priority we have a little bit of a supply problem to the east here, but everywhere else is okay this gives us time to gain our truck stop power back up again. I'm trying to think in the long run, though, whether it's, this is going to be worth it. But by the looks of things, I'm not experiencing any supply problems anyway. They're pushing. They're pushing. We've got the planes in the air. They're getting shot down from ground base AA, which is great. And no more progress. Oh, because I've been kicked from the Allies. I've, the planes had to be rebased from Scotland back to the Lowlands. Okay, so air superiority, close air support, and air recon. Oh, no, no, we're doing air superiority. We're doing interception, aren't we? There we go. And there we go. We're losing all of them immediately. Yeah. If you look really closely, you can see here. Take note that some of these planes aren't all mine. A lot of them are Lenleys from the Allies, and they're pretty bad to begin with anyway. You see, we've got lower air defense. We have lower agility. We have lower speed. So in every different way here, they have better planes than this. But to top it off as well, we have 43, and uh, they have 2,500. So... Quantity and quality, better in every single way. It just kind of feels like I'm a, a sitting duck here, and this is kind of pointless. I actually feel like our Air Force is actively hindering us right now and not helping us. Because I feel bad, I'm going to leave one mil there, but the rest are going to go into artillery. You know what's coming, right? I do this strategy every game. It makes me sad because I feel like it's not very creative. But what do you know? It works versus the AI. 
Ooh, that's interesting. We've got Concealment, which reduces enemy air support by 5%. And we've got a guy that's been promoted to the Officer Corps that's an Army Logistics. So those are both going to be very useful. So National Focuses, we'll go for them. You've got two choices, though, here. You can either go for National Focuses or you can stack Political Power. Because remember, when you don't select a National Focus, you gain double Political Power per day. So instead of plus one, you gain plus two. Uh, so if you don't really find any focuses worth your while, might be better off going for the double political power. Or you might be off doing a continuous focus. Don't forget about these in the bottom left. And loot, reducing the cost of planes by 10% can be really big. So that might be worthwhile as well. But for the time being, we're doing the sit here and wait strategy. And as you can see, the eastern flank here is the one I worry about. So every now and then, rotten down, just move six divisions over just to reinforce it. Just that little bit extra, just to give us a little bit more insurance. Oh, the Air Force is down to two planes now. So look, total planes in the sky. We have three. Oh, three. No, no, I'm wrong. That's no, two, three, two, three. No, we're not doing very well. Okay, now this is a part of the game where things could go really pear-shaped. One of our spies has been captured. Now, immediately, we're going to try and rescue that spy. However, this is an opportunity for the AI to take advantage of planning bonus because their intel network now is not fully locked down. Alternatively, what we could do if things get really pear shaped, we could do desperate defense for an extra 20% defense. Would you like to join the Allies again? You know, it'd be way more convenient if you just didn't keep booting us from the Allies, you know? You'd like to send us 20 divisions. I accept. Send them over. Oh, wow. Okay, so they've liberated Africa. That's good. Greece is pushing into Albania, which is good. Finland is at war with the Soviet Union. Oh, no, it's a winter war. Standard, standard. And uh, Norway's holding on in Italy. Well, Norway's Italy. Norwegian Italy? Yeah. And we're holding out in the Netherlands because that's where we live. Yeah, things are going well. And we're now producing more artillery to eventually allow us to add an artillery battalion onto this. Have we got enough artillery to do that? No, we need 2,000 at least and we're only at 1,000. So we'll get there. We just need more time. Max naval XP. Be a shame not to spend it, right? So here and then trade induction. Go down here. There we go. So logistics are looking pretty good now. The only issue is plane production, which I'm not going to change anyway. And for the time being, we're holding out and we're doing a jolly good job of holding out as well. British divisions are arriving. This might cause logistical problems, but we'll see. Our biggest thing we need to focus on here is going to be building anti-air with these regions. It's the biggest concern is their logistical striking us over and over and over again. And that's going to make the biggest difference when it comes down to our ability to hold in these regions. Human wave offensive. Here comes another 5% recruitable population. We're not even capped at 10% yet. Lessons of the last war. Lessons learned incredibly late as soon as we've reached this point. You see, from a realistic perspective, how prepared could the Dutch have been, you know? Because this flooding mechanic is kind of fun. How realistic would it be to hold out? To be fair, the Netherlands didn't really hold out very long, did they? Uh, they just they just lost a few forts to paratroopers, and then they capped. Very similar to Denmark, very similar to France. There was a lot of nations in World War II that just weren't willing to fight for very long, were they? And then Britain had to come up, come along single-handedly and rescue everyone. You think people would be very thankful for that, right? <laughs> Dave, I am so mad that you've said that. Production. So I think now we can go for the assault rifles. And we're focusing more on plain old soft attack and breakthrough. Guerrilla warfare. So this is a defensive strat. We can prioritize this here in the officer corps. And here we go. So it reduces the combat width massively, which is more than likely a bonus to the defense. And it also reduces the attack potential massively for the attacker as well. And once again, locking them into a battle that isn't really going to go in their favor. Can we see a guerrilla warfare anywhere? No. Remember, tactics that roll are based around the amount of reconnaissance you've got. And the more recon you get, you're more likely to pull off a tactic that's favorable. There you go. Guerrilla tactics. Oh, I appeared for a second, then disappeared. There you go. So they have used shock. And we have countered their shock with guerrilla tactics. Denied. And I think we've reached the point now that we're holding. I think we can perpetually hold. Alternatively, if you didn't want to force a civil war... You could do that, but you won't be able to take out Belgium and Luxembourg in time because you won't be able to progress down this part of the focus tree. The bonus to that is you would end up with more stability overall, but as you can see, you won't be able to expand as thoroughly as we would have normally been able to. Do everything we can here to gain stability. Anti-democratic raids will give us a tiny little tick. The smallest little tick of stability. It's plus two stability, but you lose 10 initially, so it's plus 12 over the long period. 
So lots of options here to gain some war support back, and we are losing it. Remember, max war support will give us more defense on core territory. It doesn't feel like we need it. However, it does also give attack on core territory. And what's caused this, 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 and this. So it might be worth it in the long run, our war support by selecting all of these. And the top two and three are all about getting bombed and getting combo raided and losing troops in battle. However, these ones are just flat gains to war support. And we'll click them all. Hey, join the allies again. How many times? I think we're at four or five times now. So we're going to go for breakthrough, improve our anti-air, and then fix on in the production of all our equipment. Hey, you like to send us nine divisions. What's the point? You're just going to keep me from the allies anyway. Japan is justifying on us. Do we have any land over here? No. It's because we're in the allies and they're justifying on, uh, I presume, Malaysia. And here we have a Barbarossa. Top it off. Don't forget to reassign your spies. That could be life or death. The little Belgium. Hang on a second. With the with the with the Dutch. Apparently, this is the name of the movie that you've made that gains a bit of uh, war support. Rallies the troops. It's time. The seven two. Uh, kind of. It's not seven two, but you, you get where I'm going with that, right? There you go. Seven two boys. So much more soft attack in our army now. Oh, join the common turn. Da, 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 da. And they won't keep me from the faction because they've not got this war support requirement thing. No, I'm not for that. And this is it, lads. This is the defense. Now, I was a bit disappointed when I lost the north here and a little bit losing the south here. But there's lots of opportunities to counterattack. And we are so close. So on the cusp of counterattacking. Soon. Soon. So we're going to motorize supply here and I'm going to do this. We're going to control and right click and counter attack and i think we're gonna have enough firepower to keep cycling this initially the firepower isn't overall that great however if we just can maintain the attack over and over again we can grab this line because remember this is core territory so we've got an attack bonus on it anyway and there we've grabbed it back and then we can go here now counter attack the north as well and we go here and counter attack the north as well we're obviously going for all the passive bonuses to focus on all the infantry based stuffs push got the heavy machine gun now we desperately need steel come on britain help us out some of our spies have won the sign i think two of them may have just died in succession fair enough are another one and they're all german double agents meaning they gain their intel network significantly quicker and then we're pushing this northern territory here we're in a really good spot by the way can we say to britain you get access yeah we've given them access but we can't get access from them okay thanks this is a good position for us as well because we've got high reinforce rate so the minute we lose one of our troops loses all we immediately recycle them back into the front line okay trading with britain is not a good idea it's gonna have to be the soviet union check on our miles though are we at level six for any of them no what i'm hoping to do is reduce our resource need by going for the policy and it's vertical integration, which reduces the amount of resources required, which will be good for the steel production right now. Because right now we're really, really struggling with steel production. We're losing quite a few convoys as well. Soft attack, soft attack, soft attack. You get the idea. All right, can we break again? Try again? Whoosh. Once again, the numbers in our favor massively. Remember, we've gone for mass assault, which means that the size of our battalions is significantly smaller immediately push them out of the way they're reinforcing a lot slower we're going to keep reinforcing significantly we're just going to keep recycling the front line over and over and over again we're even piercing their tanks as well which is insane the minute one of ours deorgs another one joins the battle over and over and over again you could get lucky and deorg all the ones on the front line but i suppose that's less likely and they're always reinforcing and adding more reserves. I think we're in a spot here. That I feel like we could break them. Remember to attack from multiple angles because you can put more troops on the front line that way. Another one down and we're about to break the tank. Uh, Brazil was like, send us some cast. We'll accept. And is that it? Come on. Ah. Oh. So what was about to happen there is that tank. This one was about to deorg. And there weren't any reinforcements ready to take its place. In that case, we would have immediately... Ah, oh, broken through. And is this going to happen now? There we go. We have broken through to the other side. And this is a good spot too, because now we're in a flanking position to try and encircle some German troops. Okay, let's become the spy master of the Soviet Union, the common turn. And that gives us only one extra spy. We're desperately crying out for steel here. Vichy France. This is this one instance where it might be actually worthwhile to step down to an old gun, just because it loses less steel. So look, the assault rifle uses four. But these ones use three and then two. I suppose the artillery is using lots of steel as well, so that's causing problems. 
Okay, more worker conditions because stability seems to be a big deal, right? I feel like this province here that's sticking out could be one we can pierce into now. We'll give it a shot. And we're having to do a, a storm the bridge. Now, bridge is really bad for attacking because it's, it's a river attribute. And uh, what it does is it reduces the combat width penalty. So the amount of stats that we can squeeze into the front line gives a big defense for the defender. But in this case, because we've got the numbers, I look to think we can just keep going. And there we have. There we go. Easy. Oh, what's the big picture here, though? I guess we're going to have to reclaim all of our core territory. Gaining is a ridiculous amount of manpower. Just from these states that we've gained back. 500,000 manpower. However, we don't need manpower. Manpower is not even a big deal to us. In a perfect world, we want to organize something where we can kind of encircle this region. Not for citations. Defense, recovery rate, HP. No, none of those are worthwhile. I suppose supply could be useful in the long term, but not right this second. All right, let's do it. So I'm going to select two of you. You're going to go here, 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 and here. And we'll have to micro them, obviously, as they go. It's on their own. They're probably not going to do a very good job. But we're pushing here. It looks like we'll break. Because remember, there's no river here. And there's just planes. So we're able to just keep pushing. We're pushing, moving upwards. Oop, careful. Don't leave a gap behind you. Otherwise, you'll get encircled yourself. And we're moving up. And... Is this going to be enough? Oh, it's beautiful. Remember, we're taking advantage of the attack on core territory, which we've got 100% right now, which is a 10% attack on core territory. So we're in a really good position here. You know what? I feel so confident. I'm actually going to go with an aggressive attack. We've set it here on aggressive battle plans as well. Because I feel like right now the north of Germany is super exposed. And the south's going to be easy because it's quite our core territory. But I'm just going to do a big push and just see where it gets us can circle around Bremen here and grab Hamburg. That'll put us in a really good position. There we go. And another encirclement. Nice. Oh my goodness. The flood. The, the, the gates have opened and the water is pouring through. What a sorry state of affairs for the Germans. Remember, liberated workers, by the way. We're liberating these workers. Don't forget that. The issue we've run into now is we've made the front line so massive that we don't actually have enough divisions to fill it. So remember, when you've got more divisions in a very short front line, there's more stats and concentrated manpower in that region. And now we've moved out, it's a little bit more difficult. And we've gained all cores, about 1.7 million manpower. And I think we're still recruiting more? No, we're at 12.5 recruitable manpower. So we are actually at our most key point now. What are you doing in this position? You're winning. You just keep winning, right? I feel like we need to recruit more boys, though. As many as we can, 45. We're in desperate need for guns. Maybe Lendlease will come. Yep, 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 yep. Another uncircling opportunity. Do we take it? And... Pop. We got one division. It's worth it. We've liberated the, the Danes. Indonesia would like to send us guns and artillery. <laughs> That's kind of funny. We liberate them. So they're kind of thanking us, you know? They're like, oh, well done, bro. He gave us independence. And then top it off. He constantly giving us love in return. I love that. Love it. All right, we pushed out right now, but we've kind of reached our maximum limit. There's, there's no way we can push anymore. Meanwhile, Germany's doing a good job into Ukraine, but nowhere else. To be fair, they're actually kind of pushing on the core German borders here. Yeah, we're really struggling with guns. Local population opposes senseless flooding. S excuse me? Excuse me? Oh, yeah, we, we kind of get rid of the, dr the draining now. And then we get more... We've run out of convoys now. Oh, no way. Oh, it's the Lendlease, of course. Okay, the number one culprit is usually the United States. Oh, no, it's not today. Not today. So there's one way of looking. Is you go on F4 supply mode. You see these red lines. This indicates Lendlease. So we can have a look where the Lendlease is coming from. Mexico is sending us. That's eating 51 convoys. Okay, that's too many. Ah, we're losing too many convoys. Okay, same again. Right click. Bella looks F4. Oh, it's such a shame, too, because they're sending us all this juicy equipment. Australia is usually a bad one for sending me too much equipment, too. And Malaysia, I know you're trying to help. I know you're trying to help me, bro. That's interesting how the Guanzi clique is sending me guns as well. There we go, 194. Oh, I think they were the biggest one because I've just gained so many more back. Okay, they might have been the biggest trouble causer here. But Mampo is no longer a problem, and the problem is lack of mills. We need, we need guns badly. Definitely don't need the anti-air anymore. Make mills. Suppose we could try and tack into here. No. We kind of need to back up to, to re-counterattack. Are we pushing that one Hungarian division? Oh, they're leaving a gap. Oh, that's the open goal. That's the one. That's the one. Thank you. 
Oh, they're fools. So what you do now is cancel the front line here and just attack the battle plan. And it means this is the only battle plan that's got an offensive order. So that'll be the only one that'll move. It's semi, quasi, mobilized. There you go, Denmark liberated. When I say liberated, we're occupying them now. Switcheroo. Was it a liberation or was it an occupation? Depends where you stand. There we go. Clean up. I'll admit, each battle is quite difficult to win. Um, I'll admit, winning them was a lot easier when I was on more core territory. But this is a little bit more difficult. Okay, I think attacking Denmark was actually a mistake. The Swedes are really happy about me attacking Denmark. Ah, <laughs> no surprise there. Thorough plan is pretty good for the planning bonus, so I'll I'll uh, double down on that. Okay, pushing through here is the biggest nightmare because of the straight penalty. But maybe we're getting enough planning bonus. Maybe we'll be able to push. I think we're in a position here where we're actually touching victory. Alternatively, what we could do is go for support equipment. We we'll improve the miles too, and with the support equipment, we have the ability to add on pioneers. What I could do is specifically break off your the, the, the global 14 here you guys the elite 14 sign the general and then these guys i'll get rid of you for now we will put that down to regular duplicate make it an elite and then on on pioneers and they have the attack bonus over straight and then we convert all of you guys to the pioneer template so that should be enough firepower now to push over the straight and we've got just enough support equipment to cope oh the counterattack! oh prussia's fallen while well, ukraine is holding out push through the south and i will push through the north and we'll see who meets base race waiting for the general to reassign he's here staff office plan gonna go aggressive three two one let's go and is that enough ah it's still not enough the naval panels is just too big see what difference does pioneers actually make let me have a look pioneers here we go yeah so amphibious 21 percent attack rivers eight percent and i presume this is classed as a as an amphibious invasion attack but once again they've just got too many divisions here they're all really good divisions too i think the easiest strategy is just to make one additional army and then be very careful with the land lease. 64 convoys i can accept that now we just need to make way loads of more raw guns. Whoa, way, way, way more raw guns. And artillery is doing really good too. So I can actually take that down and just add on more onto guns. I always question at this point in the game whether it's a good idea to work back to the basic bayonet rifles just so you can produce them in mass numbers. I don't know. I'm all on the fence with that. One minute. Steel's okay. Next minute. Steel's bad. Did we go the Soviet Union? But we specifically say don't go through this straight go around. That might be a little bit better. We have a few planes. What, what difference would that make, though? We don't have any ability to bomb. Once again, it's the convoys that's doing all the damage here, and these are the ones I need to keep an eye on. No, 91 convoys. I haven't got enough. I'm kind of wondering, you know, if I just had a few more divisions and prepared for it a little bit longer, maybe it would have made much of a difference. Just one extra army of 24 divisions. I just wonder if that would have been enough to go a little bit further. Convoys, convoys, convoys. Something I don't have. Sorry. All right, let's actually use our navy, then. We're going to go uh, convoy escort in this region and actively take advantage of our using our navy i have a feeling it's gonna get wiped out pretty quickly though oh they're actually french vichy france okay if we can produce equipment at home that's going to be worthwhile what i'm going to do is produce resources at home by going for the excavation and we're hitting the, the submarines now so it is kind of working however they are counterattacking us the germans right now and they're doing a decent job at it too and meanwhile momentum in the east is definitely against the germans okay it's kind of working we're uh escorting our convoys and we're getting steel into our nation now so all for the production will kick up it's annoying in a way because i want to focus on the battles and the wars but a lot of it does come down to internal industry you know and keeping everything going keeping everything looped up and keep everything moving as you can see uh there's a bit of focus in this game of keeping everything production wise flowing in this is a bug here with a ui this is a classic old bug if you fix this by making the scroll wheel appear and then deleting them it's like, it's like the UI gets tucked away in the north part of the, the screen. All right, I realize we're not using our spies. We really should be. So I'm going to spread them out. Boom. All the lines appear. What do the lines mean? No idea. But lines equals good. All right, the 24 boys, 26 boys are here. Brand new army. Had them on the front. They're not very well trained. However, we're making do what we've got. And with that, will come a brand new general. And he is... 
Incredibly ordered. No, he's not. He's politically connected. The worst one of the lot. It's good if you want to make a quick field marshal, but since when is command power ever a problem? Very rarely. Oh, and there goes my navy. Rip. Lesson learned. Uh, don't attack Denmark. Danish fans, I'm so sorry. I made a mistake. Your country is a nightmare to invade. I don't know how you surrendered so quickly. Anyway, leave a few of the boys behind. The rest of them will go in the front line to push against the Germans. And we'll go for a big unified push when we've got max planning. Does everyone become a marine style? Yeah, everyone gets converted. We're a bit behind on support equipment, but it's all good. Yeah, attack. Let's go. Push. No, we don't need reinforce right we can go down deep battle the quick switcheroo which reduces your uh, supply by 20 percent down this left side plus it's got good reinforce rate focus a little bit more on tanks but end of the day i feel like those stats work a little bit better for me because we don't need as much i guess manpower and the reinforce rate as we once did there you go bell looks the ones that held out against the germans and then the ones who took berlin this is the most historical game this blows my mind like how little of Germany could still exist for them to still continue to fight. Boom! So, what would super uber big Netherlands look like? I think it would definitely consist of some Denmark. Does that make sense, right? I feel like I'm just creating Germany here. Yeah, I think I'm making a greater Germany here, even with gobbling up chunks of Poland as well. The contribution here is 37%. Hang on, I'm the top dog. The Soviets at 27%. And they get to take chunks of France as well. <laughs> uh, it looks like Vichy France is expanding It doesn't make any sense Oh that really sucks I'm about to make some border gore That's the only one state I can't take One in France too oh, I'm not going to be able to take the one in France too And the reason why Is because it's a French core So they get a big discount off that That makes sense Pop Oh look at orange Come on Dutch people You love this right Big Dutch love here Much Dutch love Soviet France and France right next to each other. Leader of France is this guy. He's an economist, apparently. And we'd be taking the United Fleet. You know where this is going, right? Do I have enough to do a naval invasion? Oh, we're gonna take Denmark? No, no points for that, I'm afraid. Okay, the focus, the forbidden focus, the focus that fem felt kind of pointless. Yeah, the preemptive Western intervention. Well, there's be a massive relocation of German spies into Britain. You think the Brits would be kind of sussy because of this, right? And they'd be kind of like, hang on a minute, why are these German double agents working on behalf of the Dutch all seem to be relocating to Britain? Hmm. Next plane, best plane. And we can go for self-sealing now as well. I just realized there's multiple France. There's this France, and there's also this France. The real France, please stand up. After preemptive strike against the Allies, we can do continuous air production. And now air production is through the roof. We just need a copious amount of rubber and aluminium to keep it going. Seven planes per day. Such a state-of-the-art aircraft as well. Okay, all the planes. Air superiority, naval strike, maximum air superiority. Activate the battle plan. Ships are ready in position. Uh, naval invasion support? Declare on Britain. Can we do the naval invasion? Oh, let's go! This is a bit of an exploit. This is, allows you to do the naval invasion before they can even put their ships up. So you're in a position where you can just land on top of them immediately. Nice. And then we land. And they have basically no troops on the front line now. So we just gobble them up instantly. If you've landed into Britain, sometimes the AI is a little bit reluctant to move and do anything about it. So just right click on all the areas and move them. I don't know where all the allied divisions are here. Big shrug. Don't know. And if you've captured Hull, you've got it. Because that means you've got multiple supply lines and you're very broad. So you're in a really good spot to uh, lock down all of Britain. And that's Britain done. And we've got these very strange front lines here now. Because we had a British Italy. We at war. Yeah, we are at war. Why aren't you guys moving in? Go, go, go. Boom. And there goes Britain. Free France. Is this the only part of Free France? Is there anywhere else? Not really. So that one chunk of Free France doesn't even consist of the Maginot. Oh, they've got one bit of the Maginot, I'll tell a lie. Can I grab it back? The lightning speed? There we go. Okay, call to arms for everyone. We all at war now. When you have no fuel, but your buddy is the Soviet Union. Oh, and, and Romania as well. Will that capitulate France? No. Free France. Okay, it seems to be based in the little islands under Newfoundland. Okay. You want to stay there and that's where you want to end up? Fair enough. I think I'm going to have to declare we're on the other France get through the Alps and get to British Italy. Britain just won't stop D-Daying. Even when they realize that their homeland's been taken, they'd rather liberate Europe than they're liberating themselves. 
so unbelievably humble oh wow and they're all marines as well i think this might be like uh, a scripted event <laughs> but when you look at the context of like hang on you're taking out the uh the common turn as the dutch and you've lost the uk home. So it kind of feels like feel like you're liberating the wrong island bro what continent 143 factories assigned to fighters only producing well less than one a week why could that be oh yeah the lack of rubber and aluminium is a bit of an issue hungry yep unfortunately we've not got the interest industry to maintain this level of uh factories so we have to revert back to civilian factories in 1944 feels kind of weird man it's a level of production i just can never maintain that's actually destroying my industry keep trying to keep it up okay um the axis have been defeated but then we have the axis of franco in europe we knock out france france oh i've lost track how many frances we've got now soviets i need you to join this war so your puppet will join the war so i can invade them are we gonna see two italian civil wars in this game chaos in europe north versus south who will reign supreme Oh, it's the classic. The AI can't break Greece. Supply, too bad. Oh, the big problem is Bulgaria refused to join the war. Okay. They take all the land because they've got claims on it, part of their focus tree, but they're like, do you want to actually join the battles and the war? No, not really. Okay, it's not helpful, bro. Not helpful. Oh, apparently Brazil is part of the common turn. I saw the green bit at the bottom of Turkey, and I was kind of like, oh, no, another enemy. And I'm like, oh, no, never mind. Not an enemy. Friend. That's is communist europe i didn't think i'd get this far what helped me out is in the peace conference with the axis i was able to steal the italian and german fleet which gave me enough naval supremacy to take out the uk otherwise none of this would have been possible none of this would be possible if it wasn't for you thank you for subscribing thank you for liking my content and the names that are on screen right now you are the super elite thanks for being a member and if you enjoy being a member why don't you enjoy the perks early access videos check feedback gaming's youtube channel the main front page and there should be some early access videos for you to enjoy. Enjoy them weeks or months in advance. I love you. Bye-bye. Again, thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to play it for free on PC, PlayStation, Xbox by using the link in the pinned comment or the video description. New and returning players that haven't played for six months will also receive the massive bonus pack across all platforms, which includes premium vehicles and goodies. Limited time available, so make the most of it.